Well, good afternoon. Uh, this week we're looking at Reformation Sunday. Um, this is a big Sunday in the Lutheran Church, though not on scale with Christmas or Easter, of course. This is the Sunday that we look to some of our history and how we came to be a separate denomination within the greater church. So, of course, um, we'll talk quite a bit about Martin Luther. I will mention the other readings as well, but our main focus will be how we came to be Lutherans. So my game for this morning is 20 questions. This is a good and traditional game that I'm guessing any of us played on rainy days or long car rides. Someone picks something. Um, you can play with categories like animals or people, fruits, vegetables, etc. Or you can allow anything under the sun. And the rest of the people playing have 20 questions to narrow down to the answer, hopefully. Um, it helps us to think about how we describe things what characteristics we find important or recognize. But it also tells us quite a bit about the person picking the category. Do they always go for sports or animals, their favorites, etc.? Uh, maybe they're goofy. My dad used to always make up this animal called the Chinese sucking fish um, and have us guessing it became kind of a family joke. Um, if you were to be asked what a Lutheran is or why you belong to a Lutheran church, what would you say? What are the things you would use to describe it? Um, and then think about others in our congregations. Do you think their answers would be similar to yours or different? Um, for some of us, we've been Lutherans our whole lives. For others, it's been just a short while. Um, for Pastor Matt, growing up in the South, very few people knew about the Lutheran denomination. Um, whereas when I lived in Minnesota, that was the majority of churches and people. Um, what do you appreciate most about the Lutheran Church? And what bothers you the most? Well, a look to Martin Luther. Uh, most of us know that Martin Luther, Luther was um, started his life, um, well, started his, his uh, young adult life as a monk. Um, he grew up in a rather wealthy family uh, he was born in 1483. Um, he was meant to become a lawyer and business person in his father's mining company. Um, but after the result of a storm and being frightened for his life and a promise that if he was kept safe, he would dedicate his life to the church, um, he became a monk. And he was quite a monk, um, very diligent in his studies and his worship. He was a brilliant thinker. Um, but he was very troubled by doubts and temptations. Um, the church his whole life had taught him that sinners needed to do whatever they could to become more godly and to be saved from God's wrath. Um, Luther took that very seriously um, and scrupulously confessed his sins um, to the point where one of his mentors um, used to say he would barely leave the confession booth before he would turn around and be back in it again. Um, Luther definitely struggled to know if he had confessed everything, um, whether he had brought all of his sins to God, um, and had he looked deeply enough uh, at himself when he confessed, um, did he really, really want to love God and become more godly? Um, what if there was still a little part of him that didn't care about God? Uh, those questions hounded Luther. Um, even when his monastery sent him to the backwater town of Wittenberg to teach at the new university there, he never quite felt like that he was good enough, um, worthy enough, had done enough to be recognized uh, by God. So as a new Bible professor, um, Luther swore to preach and teach only the truth. Now he had a double burden. Was he good enough and was he truthful enough? Um, while trying to quell these personal doubts, he also had to teach his students and preach to his townspeople in a way that he thought brought them to the truth. Um, but how could the theology he learned be true <laughs> if it didn't bring true comfort even to a conscientious person like Luther? Um, he made himself almost sick to the point of not feeling like he was worthy enough to do the job that God and the people had called him to do. 
Um, so he really took to studying scripture on his own and trying to find passages that would bring him comfort and guide him in the way to do that. Um, and through it, Luther came to understand God's word differently than he had been taught. Um, he began to read passages um, like we are justified by faith alone through Jesus Christ and not um, apart from works. Um, and this all sort of came to a head in the year of 1517 um, when an indulgence seller came to the area. Um, so to kind of give you a little background, um, a person could donate money um, and receive an indulgence. And what the, these indulgences were, were things sold by the Catholic Church, the only church at the time, um, the universal church, which is what Catholic means. Uh, if you've ever wondered if the Apostles' Creed, why we say the Catholic Church with a small c, uh, because it means the universal church, the whole church. Um, and they believed that upon death, um, you didn't immediately go to heaven. There was this waiting period, this place of purgatory. Um, and so people could donate money um, or do certain pilgrimages or tasks, and they would receive these indulgences. And um, the indulgence was a certificate that declared either a shorter time for that particular person or for a loved one in purgatory. Um, and so you could sort of um, earn your way or your loved one's ways sooner into heaven by doing these things. Um, it was a way that like St. Peter's Basilica in Rome was built um, and the Pope collected money. Um, and for Luther, this was extremely troubling, this idea of earning your way into um, heaven. And so Luther wondered whether a person could really pay money and receive God's grace in return, how that worked. Um, so Luther began writing and he came up with these arguments against the church and against the indulgences um, called the 95 Theses. Um, he posted them on a church door in the town of Wittenberg. And it was an attempt to um, not only teach the truth about God as he was learning it, but it was also a challenge to the church's teaching about Jesus um, and the needs of the people um, versus taking advantage of them. Um, it just so happened about this time, um, this wonderful new invention entitled the printing press uh, came to be known, and it allowed these theses to be copied and sent far and wide um, and reach many more people than would have previously been able to. Um, and so because of that, Luther's teachings were taken up by these individual Christians and churches across the area. Um, famous theologians got a hold of them and important rulers around Europe. Um, and this explosion started happening. Um, so, as we know, Luther got in a bit of trouble. Um, they were These theses were posted in 1517. Um, but from there, it really encouraged Luther to begin um, putting down his own theology and seeing the differences that he felt the church was not teaching correctly um, and that he could find in the Bible. And so it took quite a few years for Luther's theology to um, mature fully. But at the heart of it always stood the question of how a person could be saved from sin and death and hell and God's wrath. Um, the church of the day said that Jesus gave us both the desire and the ability to become less sinful. But Luther would argue that we were sinners through and through, that nothing we do is ever good enough to, des to deserve God's gifts. And our only hope lies in Jesus. We have, you know, um, our faith in Jesus apart from works. Um, Jesus, for Luther, was not um, the scolder telling us to shape up, um, you know, a good example for how to live or just someone who teach, taught the ideas about God. Um, for Luther, Jesus is only and ever our savior. In Christ's death on the cross, God gives us the gifts of forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. Uh, when we trust this promise of God, we have everything Jesus has to give, and he takes on all our sins and even our death. 
Um, so from this comes the argument that we've so often heard or, or how we declare ourselves in the Lutheran church that we are both sinner and saint. Um, we are enmeshed in our sin, but we are at the same time always saved um, because of Christ's actions. So as we know, Luther's works um, ended up splitting the church. <laughs> uh, the powerful church in Rome rejected his teaching about Jesus. Um, he was considered a threat. Uh, in 1521, he was forced to appear before the emperor and church officials to defend his teaching. Um, and when he was asked to take back everything that he had written to remain in the church, he said probably the most famous quote we have from him, um, unless I can be instructed and convinced with evidence from holy scriptures or with open, clear, and distinct, distinct ground and reasoning then I cannot and will not recant. Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. Amen. So because of that, and because of his refusal to acknowledge um, Rome's power, Luther was excommunicated. That is, that he was not allowed to partake in communion or be in community with the church as it stood. And he became a wanted man. The church um, put a price on his head. Thankfully, he had a faithful prince in a man called Frederick the Wise who protected him and um, was taken to safety in one of his castles of Wartburg. We've heard that name as well. Um, and when Luther returned home, his teaching gained even more followers across Europe. Um, there's a lot more about Luther's history and his teachings, but always his idea was to put the scripture and the word of God into people's hands in order that they could experience God as well. Um, we know he took the time to translate the Bible into German. Um, when we were in Germany, I learned something that I had never known, and that was that he took a combination of high German and low German and, and um, all the dialects and really sort of came up with a unified German language that hadn't existed before then, um, so that all the people throughout the country could read the scriptures. Um, and really, he wanted people to um, experience the word of God for themselves and not just hear it from the mouths of the priests um, or the theologians. Um, to his great horror, <laughs> his followers became known as Lutherans. Um, he never wanted the church to be named after him, the denomination to be named after him. Um, he desperately wanted them to just be called Christians or evangelicals. Um, but when they grasped his teaching, <laughs> they um, brought this great change to the church. And so people wanted to honor him with that. Um, it greatly changed the church. If we think about um, what the, the greater Catholic church was at that time, um, priests were married. Uh, Holy Communion was suddenly not just taken by the priest and in honor of the congregation, but people were included. Um, people were encouraged and given the scriptures um, to hear the word and to experience it. And there was a revolution in preaching. It was no longer um, this sort of wrathful and um, shape up kind of preaching, but that of grace and forgiveness. Um, Luther and his fellow reformers saw to it that new generations of preachers were trained to declare God's mercy. Um, and they created works like hmm, what we still deal with today, the small catechism, the Augsburg Confession, um, and they taught and defended the good news of God's forgiveness in Christ Jesus. Uh, Luther himself, as we know, married a former nun and had a family. He kept teaching and preaching until he died in 1546. Um, but, uh, and there's the dog. It helped you so much and so greatly. Thank you, Kathy. I'm just going to shut you up right now. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. The animals want to help all the time. Um, but, yeah, so he, you know, he kept teaching and preaching until his death. Um, but his legacy of freeing the Gospels for sinners continues today in the Lutheran Church and through many of the um, denominations that um, began to develop around the same time. 
um, for Luther, the cross was central. And Christ's actions, not ours, were salvation. Um, he was a huge influence in both the church, but also in um, culture, in developing this idea that conversations could happen around the church, um, that reformation was allowed, um, and that we could discuss and learn as everyday people. Um, and not just have special allotted people to um, carry the word. Um, so that's my little bit about um, Luther. I apologize again for the animals. Um, but, you know, that's part of the the um, beauty of what's going on. Not a lot of positive things, but um, that I can talk to you from a sunroom with an old TV and Lily's schoolwork behind me, and we can still um, remain connected. We are still reforming to this day. Uh, I do want to let you know what the readings for Sunday are, because you'll hear those from Pastor Matt tomorrow. Um, it is year A, and each year Reformation Sunday does have different readings between um, year A, year B, and year C. Um, this year it's year A, and that is when we look at the Gospel of Matthew. Um, so the readings are Leviticus 19, 1 and 2, and 15 through 18. Um, this reading comes from the part of Leviticus that is known as the Holiness Code. Um, it's a long reading where Moses is telling the people how God would want them to live um, and how to live lives worthy of being the new people of Israel. Uh, the second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. Um, here, Paul is continuing his encouragement to the church in Thessalonica um, and his desire to tend to them. There's a lot of maternal language in this particular reading um, of how Paul and his disciples want to nurture the younger churches and help them to grow. Um, and then the gospel for tomorrow is Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 to 46. Um, and once again, we see the Pharisees and some of the other leaders um, attempting to, we'll say, learn from Jesus, um, trick Jesus, you know, get him into some kind of trap. Um, but in this one, they ask him about the greatest commandments. And he sums up all of the commandments in the two statements that we probably know the best um, in the church. And that is to love the Lord your God wholly right? With your heart, your soul, your mind, all your strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. Um, so those are our readings coming up for this Sunday. Um, next Sunday is All Saints. And so um, I ask if you have a story um, or a name or someone you would like included in the lesson next week as we talk about um, why we take this time to honor the saints. Um, please feel free to send me an email or text me um, any way to let me know. And I will we'll have a prayer at the end of the lesson next week, um, including those names and remembering all of the saints who have done so much for us. Uh, so thank you for joining me and we'll see you next week for All Saints Sunday. Bye.